Today's video, I'm going to show you one of the best red zone passing concepts in Mountain 24. The play is going to be dig return out of the gun bunch offset formation in the Indianapolis Colts offensive playbook. And the main purpose we're using this play dig return is due to this nice little uh, return or zig route that we have on the right hand side of your screen. Now I'm going to kind of set up kind of the meta way that a lot of people like to play defense down here in the red zone. And that is to basically set up the 4-3 even 6-1 defense. And you're going to see some variations. Sometimes they'll use zone drops. Sometimes they won't. We'll start with no zone drops. We'll kind of explain why this is such a good red zone play. So basically what we're going to do here is, again, just kind of set up a standard red zone defense. Typically it will be like hard flats, and then they may put some clouds out here to the right side. And then from there, you know, it could be these quarters. It could be yellow zones. We'll go over that. Uh, but I want to first show you the route combination, primary route combination that we're going to be util utilizing. And that is we're going to motion the solo wide receiver inside. We're going to put him on a hitch route. The purpose of this is to get him on the numbers, as close to the numbers as we possibly can. So as you see here, we have our bunch to the wide side of the field. If you're able to have a hash mark opportunity down in the red zone, you want to run this with your bunch to the wide side of the field. So if, if the ball was on the other hash, we would just flip the play. And then I'll also show you what to do if you're in the middle of the field here in just a second. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this slot receiver and we're going to put him on a slot apprentice or hot route master post. And really important, you want to go ahead and smart route that route. So as you see what this is going to do is it's going to make it basically kind of a makeshift uh, slant type of route. But the cool part about the smart routed post is the route is actually going to cross the formation really, really well. So what you're going to see is this hitch is going to kind of hold this cloud flat. And then you're going to be able to kind of throw this in the back corner of the end zone. Now, the other thing that you have here is you have this, this uh, really unique route over here to the left side. So if you want to smart route the hitch, you certainly can do that as well. Let me show this to you again. This time we'll put some hook curls out here to the right and the left, kind of standard. And again, you can kind of anticipate the user, of course, to be in the middle of the field. But you'll see here, as long as you have some time, you see how that post kind of runs on the back corner of the end zone, which is going to open up you know, a lot of space for us. So, here, just for sake of illustration, we'll call the dogs off on the pass rush. A lot of times you'll see rush three or rush four, but the sheds won't be as significant as they are in practice mode when you're in an actual game. So I'll just kind of mimic that and show you that this cloud flat gets pulled inside really well. You just want to throw this basically free forming it to the left, and you see how you can kind of get that little uh, tight window on the sideline. So what this is going to do is it's going to pull the user out of the middle of the field typically. So what you'll oftentimes see is this user will basically vacate the middle of the field to go run with this post. And he's going to kind of rely on these two hook curls to be able to defend kind of the intermediate areas of the field. Well, of course, as you can kind of imagine, this opens up a real tiny window in the middle of the field where we can actually hit this uh, little zig route. You can throw that kind of right in there on the cut. A lot of times that catch animation will actually allow you to hold on to the ball. Another thing you can do and again, just kind of depends on how they're going to shade their hook curls and stuff. A lot of times they'll shade them outside and underneath, which will do a really good job against this whip route. OK, some people don't do that in the red zone either. Sometimes in the red zone, what you'll see is they'll, um, you know, they'll put that guy in a purple, which we'll cover that in a second. But anyway, what you'll see here is you can actually playmaker this guy to the right. And it kind of opens up that little intermediate window. If they do go user the post, you just flick your right joystick and that hitch will kind of come back over the middle and give you another read. Again, this is against a drop coverage in the red zone. Sometimes people pressure you in the red zone, but you are blocking your running back. So it should help significantly with the pressure. Now I want to go over a couple of other things that you might uh, see people do here uh, down the red zone. One of those is to put these curl flats at 20, these hook curls at five. Uh, this is becoming a really, really popular way to defend some stuff. And uh, I'll, ex I'll explain why it's actually a really good way. So what you're going to see here is we're just going to shade these uh, hard flats down. And then we're going to put the safeties in purples. And then typically this accompanies with vert hooks from the linebackers and then uh, hard flats from the outside corner. So defense kind of looks something like this. And this is a really good kind of flooded coverage that people can go to down here in the red zone. And this will do a pretty decent job of bagging um, some of the stuff here. But if you take a look, the safeties oftentimes – they kind of struggle to get out here to this post. So you see how he's kind of holding. And you see how late in the play I can throw that post just like I was able to against the cloud flat defenders. I can also throw that against the, the purple zone. So, again, you see here, here's the coverage. Let me just spy this guy to try to, you know, kind of call off the, the pass rush. And we'll show this to you again. So, again, 
you're just looking here to the to the post. So you see, if we wait on this super late, we get this nice little window in the back corner of the end zone. Now, real quick, one other little tip for throwing this uh, in the back corner of the end zone. One of the things that I've found to be really effective in game, not so much in practice mode, but in game, is to really try to free form it like to the outside and back corner. If you don't do that, oftentimes they can kind of stop and this will lead to interceptions. So you really want to like kind of free form it just like that right there. That was perfect. Then you see that purple kind of gets hung up by the hitch because purple zones in general, curl flat zones, they play the curl to the flat. So they're playing inside outside on a route that is kind of hitting that, that outside corner area of, of the end zone. Another thing you might experience down here is you might experience like a heavy blitz. So if they do send, you know, five or whatever, and let's say the user decides he's going to run and he's going to go guard the post, right? Something we could see is maybe a defense that looks like this. And then this guy kind of runs with the post. This guy might be on a hard flat, something like this, basically. You know, again, then, and then maybe they, you know, this guy might be in the middle third. But basically just the idea here is if they don't have a yellow zone on the field uh, on the bunch side, and oftentimes this, dig re this return route can be thrown anyway, you just want to kind of look for it early on in the read. What you'll see here is you see how this kind of zigs out, and then there's this little window like – you could sometimes throw it inside on the inside cut. You could sometimes throw it on the outside cut. Kind of just depends on what they do from a coverage perspective behind this. But in general, you see right here again, see how there's these just little pockets that you can kind of hit with this little whip route. And even though we're getting these knockouts, a lot of times in game, this, uh, this play will actually be caught. And the reason why it will be caught is because for some reason in the red zone specifically, you get these um, these animations where they'll basically catch the ball, and then it looks like it's knocked out, but it's not. It's kind of like the sideline catching animations that we've seen in Madden 24 as well. So here you see, here's a verhook. See how the verhook's inside? I'm just going to wait on that window to open up, possession, catch it, and you see how that is an option as well. So to me, these are some really good red zone. Con this is a really good red zone passing concept. We're utilizing the hitch on the numbers on the short side of the field, and then we're utilizing basically the flat zig. But the beauty of this specific zig route um, is that it's just a little better. It's a little more longer developing. Now, I wanted to spend uh, the latter part of this video just kind of breaking down and explaining how to run this play from the middle of the field as more of like a two-point play uh, situation and kind of explain you know how all this shapes up. So let's say you want to run this as a two-point play. As you can see here to the left-hand side, my solo wide receiver, if I motion him inside, he's really no longer on the numbers. So what this is going to result in is the cloud flat defenders, the purple zones, they're going to have a better chance of being able to get outside. And we'll kind of illustrate that with these adjustments right here. But what you'll see here is you see how, that, see how the out, we have outside leverage and then he's able to play that? It's because the, of where that hitch route is actually – kind of stopping at. If you can get that hitch route to stop more to the numbers, you're going to have a better chance to do that. So the way that I like to do it is just put the solo receiver on a curl, and then I'm going to smart route that curl route. And so what you're going to see is now this is a little bit more um, kind of to the numbers. So a lot of times what will happen, there is still chance that this might not work. But in general, this is kind of your best approach if you want to run the same concept as a two-point play. This is why you hear a lot of Madden players talk about the importance of hash marks because if we were on a hash, it would be just a little bit better to guarantee the result. So anyways, what you'll see here is this is now kind of more so on the numbers. The window is a lot tighter, but if you look there at the left side, we did have the window to throw the post route. So we'll kind of show this uh, one more time via the post, and then we'll maybe take a look at some of the other routes. But and we'll, we'll call the pass rush off just so you can see kind of seven on seven, what this will look like. So again, I'm just putting the solo receiver on a curl and then smart routing him because that's going to keep him on the numbers. So I'm just waiting on this. And you see, I can throw this in that back corner of the end zone really effectively against the coverage. So then the other element of the play that I wanted to showcase, let's assume they go to take the post. Then that is going to leave this zig route. So if they run with the post route, what you'll see here is the zig should open up in pockets. See how the, the vert hook, and, and this is actually going to be a little better specifically for the zig. And the reason why is because yellow zones, they play pretty much from hash mark to number generally, especially these vert hooks and if they shade outside. So because they play from like hash mark to number kind of, the thing that you're going to be able to see here is when we pull the vert hook inside a step, 
it makes it so he can't play as outside. So you see, he's inside, inside, inside. We just wait, and there's this little window right there. And as you can see, you kind of get that catch animation for a really successful red zone play. So this, to me, is probably one of the better ways to score inside the five in the game. It's utilizing really the two cornerstone red zone concepts, which is the post hitch, hitch on the numbers, and then the zig flat to the opposite side. And so you have both of those within this play, and I think it makes it really, really, really effective. I want to thank you for watching the video. If you guys want to take your Madden game to the next level, make sure you join the Patreon. Link's in the description. Ten bucks will get you access to everything we have over there, full offensive, defensive ebooks that are pretty much guaranteed to help you become a Brad and Madden player. So if you want to sign up for that, head down to the description and click the link down below.